Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to your own Silicon Valley Tech Talks channel. This is your host, Faisal Vatu from Sunnyvale, California. In the past few decades, we have made major leap forward in our ability to communicate with each other quickly and efficiently. Thanks to all the innovations in communication space. However, many of these advancements in the communication space only happened because of the innovations in foundational technologies in radio frequency, microwave, and satellite communication. In today's show, we'll try to learn a bit more about these foundational technologies and future trends. We are fortunate to have Jin Baines as our guest today. Jin is CEO of MiniCircuits. MiniCircuits is a global trusted supplier for RF, microwave, and millimeter wave components. They have been leading in this space for more than half a century. Jin brings 30 plus years of experience in RF domain. Before many circuits, he had executive leadership roles at Meta and Amazon Web Services. And before that, he built RF and wireless division from scratch at National Instruments. So without any further delay, let's go and talk to Jin and learn from his insights. Hello, Jin. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hey, Faisal. I'm doing fantastic. Cool, cool. Yes. So Jin, for the benefit of our audience, can you tell us uh, what is the product portfolio of Mini Circuits and what are the key strategic priorities for the company in the next few years? Yeah, of course, Vessel. Yeah, so we're an iconic RF microwave company. You know, we've been around for like 56 years or so at this point, founded in 1968. Uh, large portfolio of products. So we're known as essentially sort of a one-stop shop for anything RF microwave. Uh, that means that we've got things all the way down from our, some of our core products, which are transformers and balance, into amplifiers, mixers, couplers, passive devices, active devices. Um, and then we have them in various form factors. So we have a variety of filters that come in, um, uh, classical filters, LTCC filters, etc. But then we have packaged components in a microwave module type system, um, basis. And then we also have chip-based components. So we do a lot of mimic design today. That's an expanding part of our for, uh, portfolio. And uh, we even build test rack sort of systems, so rack mountable systems where we'll have switches, uh, attenuators, amplifiers built into a custom matrix of some sort. Uh, all of that is part of our portfolio. Over 10,000 products active uh, right now. And our priorities are really to continue building out the portfolio, make sure that we're really tuned in with where, where our customers are, where the markets are, and then delivering the products that really meet their needs. And so that includes more mimic products, better and faster delivery of filters, and uh, more of the custom uh, switch matrices, et cetera, too. Are you seeing any specific trends um, in the future which are of more interest to you? We see, uh, right now, we see a lot of demand uh, in the aerospace defense industry. Uh, right now, we're seeing a lot of that. Longer term, I think we're seeing more interest in more complex systems where you might have reconfigurable filters, you might have an integration of filters and amplifiers. So we're beginning to see some of those trends in our in our business. So those are some of the trends that we see. Uh, like you said, uh, many circuits have been around for more than 50 years mm -hmm. and they have maintained their leadership position in the space they are in. Uh, what is the secret sauce of this longevity uh, of leadership and differentiation? Is it the culture, uh, vision, yeah. strategy or combination of few things? That's a great question. It's, you know, it's, it's a fascinating company. When Harvey Cayley, our founder, started it, uh, he really just wanted to build products that were the highest quality product possible, uh, serve a variety of customers. So he built a mixer to start with our original product back in the late 60s, early 70s. In fact, we, we still sell that product even to this day. Uh, so part of our longevity is actually having a large portfolio of products. That's, that's a big part of it. And really responding to the customer needs and it does come down to, you know, having a really strong culture that was sort of built in there by Harvey from the original days. And I see it, I, be, uh, you know, I, I knew it from the outside when I used to be a customer of many circuits. Now I'm on the inside and I see that just about every employee embodies our, uh, our values of having high quality in all of our products, really caring about the customer. Those are the things that sort of differentiate us. And we, we tend to we tend to really pay attention to where the, the market's going, where the customers are going. And so we're not, uh, we're not taking massive, big risks as a company. We're, we're more like gradually continue growing and developing our, our products 
and serving our customers. So we end up being very, very reliable and a very sort of secure uh, supplier for so many of our customers. So speaking of where the markets are going, uh, AI applications are putting a lot of uh, hard requirements on mm -hmm. hardware systems. Uh, talk about uh, compute requirements, yeah. power efficiency, or latency of communication between the components. Uh, what sort of challenges are your customers seeing uh, because of AI, which they want you to help with? And what is your strategy to address those challenges? Well, it's important for us as a company to be around for the long term, right? So we've been around 55, 56 years, and our plan is to be around for the, uh, the very long term. We look at AI as something that is a, obviously a sort of a mega trend occurring in the industry right now. So we just recently had an offsite, and one of the things that we focused on was what's our strategy relative to AI? And that was one of our key uh, discussion points. And so we had several of our team members sort of come back with a plan as to here are some ideas around uh, how to engage with AI, how it might affect us, and how we might leverage it. So we're still figuring all of this stuff out. AI is moving pretty quickly for us. We're not a developer of AI tools in any way, right? So we develop components and subsystems, and these go into our, our customers' applications, whether it's in the lab or in, uh, in their products. And so one of the ways that we're looking at AI is how do we enhance our customers' experience with our products? How do we build products faster using AI? So we're looking at that, like are there ways to use AI tools uh, to develop our products faster, to make them more versatile and flexible for our customers? We're also looking at it from how do we use AI to make our company more efficient, right? We can leverage AI in so many ways. And so our uh, chief uh, information officer, he's helping to lead the charge in terms of how we think about AI and how we embed AI into the, uh, the sort of the fabric of our, our company. So we're looking at it from all these different angles. And what we're gonna do is, uh, one, we're gonna stay on top of AI as to where it's going. Secondly, we're gonna do some experiments where we'll figure out place, places to embed AI within our, uh, our, our products and our company. And then we're gonna iterate based on that and make sure that we're staying up, uh, up to speed with AI and, uh, and benefiting from it uh, to the best extent possible so that our customers can benefit from it. Uh, apart from the company efficiency and uh, looking at it from the company perspective, so far customers haven't come mm -hmm. to you with different set of requirements because of AI. Is that true? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I think that the expectation is that we're going to continue delivering products faster and uh, more suitable to our customer applications. And so I think that will mean a little bit more reconfigurability and there might be some AI machine learning sort of um, involved in that stuff. But there isn't a direct thing that comes from our customers to say, hey, you know, you guys need to be doing this or that relative to AI. Uh, but I do think that we need to leverage AI so that it'll benefit our customers. We have made a major leap forward in communications innovations. Uh, however, uh, I'm assuming story still continues and there are, there are more problems, more gaps to be addressed in this space. Right. Uh, can you share some examples which people yeah. like uh, young professionals, students can work on yeah. uh, to help you out? Yeah, so some of the innovation areas for us, they, they come back a lot to generating better products in a smaller and smaller form factor, uh, better power efficiency, better packaging techniques so you can handle the thermal uh, effects. So we have a variety of customers all the way from space applications, military type space to commercial space. Uh, to um, uh, industrial applications. And what we're finding is, you know, the, the term that's used a lot is swap, uh, size, weight, and power. And the military guys use that term a fair bit. And even on the, uh, on the commercial side, you hear the same sort of concept. So I think there's a large trend and desire to continue going down the curve of lower weight, smaller uh, packages, uh, better integration in that respect and preserving performance or enhancing performance. So there's a lot of areas to innovate in there. We're packing a lot of power into little devices like 0202, very, very small devices now. And the need from our customer is to pack more uh, performance into smaller packages. And so I think um, we can definitely use help in terms of packaging capabilities, uh, new topologies for circuits, new architectures for, for circuits. Uh, those will be really good. We're moving more into the GAN side of the uh, semiconductor industry. And GAN is still pretty, uh, pretty young. Uh, it's a higher efficiency way to deliver power amplifiers and power systems, uh, but it's still got a long way to go. I think there's a ton of innovation that's required to make GAN more of a mainstream to drive the cost down. One of the big problems of GAN is the gallium nitride 
is the, uh, the, the cost is too high. And so that's a big area that we need to focus on. Packaging those types of products, that's a, a big challenging area too. So there's a lot of places to innovate in, in, our, in our area, in our industry. Uh, so Jin, you had uh, 30 plus years of uh, career, mainly in the large companies. And uh, you are a great example of someone who excelled through the, the career. And now you are a CEO of a you know, big company. So what advice you will share with the young professionals to excel in large corporations? Well, I appreciate you saying that, Fessel. You know, I, I think about it. It's amazing that it's been 30 years. It actually has been just about 30 years. I think June 94, I graduated as my undergrad degree. And uh, it's been a, a really fun journey. I think, um, the, I think that's part of it for me is just I've always wanted to learn and grow. And I've always been curious. Uh, Amazon has one of the principles, learn and be curious. That one really resonates with me. And so during my time at Amazon, there was many really good uh, principles. And that was one that stuck out with me. And I realized that's one that I've always used through my career, uh, always learning, always being curious, always trying to stretch yourself, always trying to challenge yourself. So I think that's something that I think is important for uh, all the, uh, the younger engineers, anybody in their career. You're never done learning. You're never done growing. You're never done challenging yourself. Uh, so that's my advice is to, to do that. Uh, look for places where you have skills and talent and make sure that you're, you're really making yourself valuable to the companies you're working at and to the, uh, you know, the things that you want to do in the world. The things you want to do in the world, you have to have the right skills. So develop those skills and then keep growing those skills. So those are two important pieces. Uh, the third piece is really building relationships. I think that's a key part of it. What you realize, and I'm, I'm amazed sometimes where I'll run into people that I knew back when I started. And it's amazing how everyone has a long memory. And uh, you may think that, you know, you'll never see these folks again, or you'll never, uh, you'll never interact with um, uh, folks, those same folks again. It turns out that your reputation matters for more than anything. And so make sure that you're treating people well, make sure that you're learning how to work well with people, make sure you develop the interpersonal skills. Those are critical and they don't get taught in school. So if somebody's coming out of school, they don't get taught, work on the interpersonal skills and work on the relationship side. That ends up being super, super valuable. So those are some of the things. And the, one I, the other one I wanna mention that I think is really important, has always been important to me. I started out at uh, Hewlett Packard early part of my career. And one of the things that HP was really good about was their core values and respect and teamwork and having the right set of values and very importantly, integrity. And so those core values are super important. So I would say as, a, as, a, as somebody who's going through your career, think about your values, make sure that you're living by your values and make sure that you're in a place where you're actually uh, aligned with the values of the companies you're working at and then you'll actually be better off for it and you'll feel better as you make those contributions that, uh, that I was talking about. Thank you very much, Jin, for participating in our show. I'm sure audience learned a lot from your insights. You're, you're very welcome, Fessel. It's very good to see you. Thanks.